of grades and not grades. Um, in addition to the stress as described in 2020, we would have a system where the grades and the rankings would actually not be re representative of the uh, student body as a whole. We would have uh, a few people that would have some grades and then many people wouldn't. And we were worried, for example, the question came up, what will the judges think? Well, one of the things that I was worried about is what would employers think if they were looking at one candidate who had a couple of grades and another candidate who didn't have any? And uh, we're, we're all human. We all draw conclusions based on uh, choices that are made. And we felt like um, students would head into exams, stress about that possibility, and then have to make choices between taking care of their family and themselves and studying for exams in a way that would be uh, uh, bad for them under the circumstances. So that was another thing that I was particularly worried about in making the choice. And I think it's fairer to the group if we just have it all pass fail for the entire semester and that's what it is but that, again that's my view and i don't want to speak for anybody else thank you dean smith um uh, so we have a couple people in the queue liana but also professor ariana levinson was in the queue before i would just note and i'm, I'm not i because i'm trying to pay attention to this i'm not following the 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 uh feed uh, uh very carefully right now but connor gafferty the sba president did point out in the feed um, and I should have mentioned this, the SBA did have a vote beforehand and uh, registered uh, 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 past fail. And that included, so this goes to your question, Dimitri, that included representation from one else. Um, Professor Levinson, do you, are you still there? Yes, I'm here. I just wanted to um, say tell Dimitri that as the Dean said, um, this is a group of people, a relatively small group of people trying to make up their individual minds and cast a vote with as much input as they can have from um, Connor and other students who have reached out to them. So we genuinely tried to do it was best. And one thing that, um, that made me decide that the pass fail option was best for our students is that students that need recommendations and know their professors, um, you know, Dimitri, I'm always happy to give you a recommendation. And I think that students who need those for clerkships and such um, also will have professors who are willing to do that. So so to echo um, what, what uh, what the other deans have said, Dean Sweeney and Dean Smith and Dean Collin, um, I felt we really needed to protect everyone, especially those who we don't know what can happen. I might lose my father tomorrow, and then how fair is my grading going to be of you if it's not pass fail? And um, I just wanted to share that I really thought our administration did a fantastic um, job, and that I'm happy to talk with you, Dimitri, um, anytime about it. Thank you very much. Um, Liana, you've had your hand up for a while. Please go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Okay. And, so, and Liana, let me just say after, just so people know that I'm paying attention after you, DJ Chris, as I don't know if DJ is a man or woman, but has his or her hand up. Uh, Liana, go ahead. All right. First, I want to say thank you to uh, you, Dean Crawford, and the faculty for all the time and effort you've put into this. I know I've sent a series of emails to Dean Sweeney, so thank you for <laughs> responding to each and every one of them. Um, so something um, that I'm a little concerned about, and I, first of all, I'm here as a representative of PALS, but my question is completely from myself, and I will speak, be speaking for myself at this time. So um, I know the faculty had to make a decision on which basically had to choose who would advantage from this. So my question is regarding students who possibly needed the grades this semester because of their GPA, students who are one on academic probation, students who needed a higher GPA due to how competitive some of these job um, applications are. Now, will they have the opportunity to make this up in the summer or will the summer courses also be considered pass fail? Um, so Liana, first on the academic probation, last week the faculty also voted to extend academic probation for a semester. Um, so meaning through the fall semester, not the summer semester. 
So, um, so that addresses that question, I believe. Um, as for um, the question of being competitive, again, I think I would just repeat a part of what I said before, which is that uh, those students are going to be like most law students nationally, and employers are going to know this as much as the students will. Um, I liked the, uh, and I noted that uh, we have to, on Tuesday, address the question of assessment and reporting that Elizabeth Clements and Katie Davidson raised, so, and that goes to your question as well. So we'll try and figure out something that will uh, protect students, but also, once again, you know, think of what Professor Levinson just said, which is that you know, it helps if you know a faculty member, we're a small faculty, you can go to people, you can ask them for uh, recommendations, and they can speak to this. I, I also might add, I'm teaching a small uh, class right now, and I said to my students in class this week, I said, you know, this, uh, even though we're all now pass fail, it, my paper, students writing, a, my course, students are writing a paper, I said, even though this is pass fail, this really ups the ante for you to, if you don't get sick, you know, provided you're still okay or don't have other distractions, that you do what you can to do really well because then you'll be able to get a good letter from me when we're past all of this. And so we, we are thinking about these things, but as I said, Leanna, we will uh, next week uh, uh, try and come up with more specifics on this. Does that answer your questions? It does, and I actually have a follow-up question, if that's okay, before okay. you move on. Um, and maybe Connor can help answer this question. Um, I don't know if SBA has ever had a representative from PALS be present at a meeting before, or if they've been welcome to attend meetings. I know that they have a diversity chair, and I'm curious if that's something that SBA would consider in the future. Um, unfortunately, I, it's almost time for me to hand over the organization um, for the upcoming semester, but I definitely would like to see a PALS representative like able to attend meetings so they can give an unbiased opinion as a representative and basically speak for the organization as a whole and not just be there as a member speaking for themselves. And for those of you who don't know, uh, PALS is the parent law student organization, still law students who are parents. Connor Cafferty, are you there? Do you want to address mm -hmm. that for the SBA? Um, could you just repeat the question that I was following, so, yeah. but I just want to make sure I'm addressing the question. So, so Liana is, is the president of PALS, parents who are law students, and she said, has the SBA ever considered having a formal PALS representative on the SBA, not just coming in their individual capacity, but representing parents? I'm not sure if the SBA has ever considered that. Uh, I can only speak to my time on SBA, which is the last two years, and I can say that's not been a point of discussion that I've seen. Uh, it was my first year of law school that a group of students uh, petitioned SBA to add the diversity chair, which is a, the most recently added position on the Student Bar Association. And I think that there is certainly the possibility of additional positions being created on SBA and that, you know, if, if that's a way that students feel their interests could be better represented. Um, I, I'll also point out, you know, we do have 20 positions on, on the Student Bar Association and certainly we encourage each student who has a position to not just bring their position, not just bring their uh, opinions and perspectives as a member of the SBA, but as a member of every organization that they're a part of. But certainly I'd be happy to, you know, discuss that further if someone is interested in seeing SBA's number of positions expand. So Leanna, maybe you can take that up independently with Connor and the SBA, is that okay? Yes, that is, thank you. Okay, um, next I have two remaining questions I've received, but DJ Kress has had a hand up for a long time. Please go ahead, DJ. Can you, is it working? I, we can hear you now, hi. Okay, um, I just wanted to kind of um, say thank you also for kind of going to this past fail. 
um, at the 1L, I was like, okay, well, you know, that there's the rest of law school to kind of figure it out and, you know, I'll do what I have to do. Um, but I was actually in the ER all last night and I'm waiting for my COVID testing. Um, and I for sure, right. you know, so like having the, um, kind of like having that peace of mind, like, you know, you don't expect it. I haven't really left my house except to go to the grocery store. So I'm like, yeah, everything's going to be fine. Um, but I think that, you know, it's something that does, you know, kind of need to be in um, everybody's mind too, that like even going to the grocery store can expose you to it. Um, and so, you know, I appreciate it. And I just wanted to say that I appreciate, you know, the staff and the deans and everybody kind of deciding to make the choice because this is a super uncertain time. Um, and so while you're fine now, like you might not be. Um, and so I appreciate it. Uh, like I wasn't in that uh, position where I was like, okay, well, you know, I didn't think that I would be in this position, but here we are. So I just wanted to say thank you to everybody that, you know, helped. Uh, thank you, DJ, and I. You know, we're thinking the thinking the best of you for getting these results. And please keep the you know any any one on the faculty or staff you feel comfortable with informed about your health. Okay. I think you turned your mic it's, off. So. Yeah, um, I definitely will do. Uh, but yes, and so also just kind of like a follow up. If you don't feel right going tested because I thought I was just having like a panic attack and I actually have like a pneumonia so like if you feel right do go and get tested good thank you very much okay I hope you're okay so I have two more questions that I'll read um, the first is about um, summer jobs what options will there be for students who no longer have summer jobs because of COVID-19 Specifically, how will OPD provide assistance and mentorship to students who, one, are on academic probation for another semester or must retain the same GPA from the previous semester, and two, have limited access to work opportunities due to social distancing requirements that will likely lead into the summer? So um, at the uh, end of last week, Thursday or Friday, I don't remember, but I um, called Dean Hajak and we had a long conversation about what this would mean for the job market. Uh, the good news is she's an experienced professional doing this for nearly 20 years. And so, although obviously she's not dealt with this kind of a crisis, no one has, um, she's dealt with a couple of recessions. And so she knows what to anticipate, what to look for, what to, what to do. And so she and I have been in constant contact about uh, what this means. Um, and so for students on academic probation, you know, you just need to be in touch with OPD, with your faculty members um, uh, and with others. Uh, we're putting out, we had a meeting with our Law Alumni Council, you know, days are kind of blending in together for me here, but I think it was sometime last week, uh, we had a meeting with the Law Alumni Council and stressed the need for them to get out the word for jobs and I think everybody's still in a mode on the employer side of trying to figure out what they're going to do. So we're thinking about this is what I want you to hear right now. We don't have a concrete plan of action with all of these particular things ironed out yet, uh, but we are uh, working on it. Uh, one thing anticipating, because I know some people have already lost their jobs, they've been in touch with me and with Dean Sweeney um, for the summer. One thing we are trying to do is put together a robust uh, schedule of classes taught by our faculty uh, over the summer. Um, the, the university has said that all summer classes will be online. Um, so uh, Professor Arnold, who's the Associate Dean for Curriculum and Scheduling, he and I have been working to try and put together a robust package of summer courses. Um, the good news here is, if any of you have taken summer courses before, I don't want to get too far into the financial weeds here, but the university in the past uh, charged uh, uh, our students $1,100 per credit, which is not very economical. It's not equivalent to what you pay per credit on a 15 uh, uh, credit semester, which is what $11,000 for um, uh, in-state students represents. For this summer, the per credit cost is going to be $723. 
um, uh, uh, a credit hour which is slightly less than what you pay in a 15 credit payment. Um, so it will be more affordable and my hope is that we can get together enough courses at that rate and, and at that rate that s students who want to can take up to 11 courses and then at least when they're not employed make progress to a degree. And so uh, that's one thing uh, we're hoping to do. Uh, so, um, I, you know, just keep on the lookout for that. I hope we'll have that all put together by next week, but it's a work in progress. Um, is, uh, I see we have a question from Michaela Fields, but before I, uh, well, maybe Michaela wants to, to come in on this point. Michaela, go ahead. Um, I don't really have a question. I just wanted to state, um, I am a peer advisor for OPD. And so if anyone is having any issues or are, is scared or wants to speak or anything like that, you, you can feel free to email me and I'll get back to you. And then as well as students who are afraid about their GPA and job placement, I can also be a kind of a testimony and try to give you guys ideas to help with that coming in the next semester. So I just wanted to say that I'm here if you guys need me. Um, that's my job essentially i know i can't really do much as a student but i can be a listening ear and i can try to help you guys get through this um weird situation great thanks michaela thank you very much um anyone else on that point on summer on job placement i should add um i also last weekend i called professor santry who uh is of course the director of our domestic violence clinic and does the mediation clinic we talked about options that will be offered this summer so students who want to work in the clinic can apply to do that um, in addition um, we're working with professor jordan who um, oversees the live client experiential courses to figure out which ones of those can um, continue to happen over the summer if you don't get experiential requirements uh, on a distance basis. So we're working on that as well. And again, I hope that this will, will have some clarity for students on the week. Um, uh, Michaela, have I answered your question? Or thank you very much for your offer, by the way, but I, I don't think there's any question there. Correct, Michaela? Yes, sir, thank you. Okay, uh, Elizabeth Clements, you have your hand up. Uh, yes, thank you, Dean Crawford. Um, just, I know this is very early with thinking about summer courses, but has there been any thought to the timing of summer courses? Um, because some students might have totally lost summer jobs and others might just be postponed. So we might be free early in the summer, but not late. Um, yeah, well, the, the schedule is going to be what it um, was before. Um, let me tell you right now just give me a second here uh, so uh, in other words the, the university is not um, changing its uh, schedule there are two sessions um, uh, the first session the regular session is May 18 to July 10th um, and the second short session, it, which can only have two credit courses, is July 13th to August 11th. And so what we're trying to do is to get courses, as I say, either get um, uh, uh, bar tested or required courses to the extent we can find faculty to do that, or to get perspectives or writing requirement courses so students can get those out of the way uh, if they want to. Uh, but those sessions, again, those dates are set by the university, and there's been no discussion in any of these meetings I've been on about changing uh, those dates. Does that answer your question? Um, yes, it does, if those are the set dates. Um, I just thought there would be an opportunity for um, earlier classes, like the domestic violence course, but that was a one-week accelerated or two-week accelerated course, so I guess that was a different situation. But she's, she's still, I, I don't know the dates that she's doing that. I know she's doing the course. Do you, anyone else? It's, it's the last two weeks of May. Okay, well, then it'll stay where it is, I think, yeah. Um, so, it, and I hope we have some information on this um, soon. Um, Dimitri Johnson Cantu, you had your hand up. Yes, Dean, I did have a question, but I, I think y'all kind of got to, to it and towards it. So, thank you. 
Okay, um, my last question, uh, and then we can just open up to general discussion, is whether the school has a plan going forward if the pandemic leads into the next school year. Uh, the answer is, uh, and again, this is not just the law school, so this is not something, um, um, it's been something on my radar for this week at least, it's not on the radar, I don't think of anyone else in our unit and it doesn't need to be for the moment, but uh, we are discussing this at the university level. Uh, some epidemiologists um, are worried that there will be a second round of uh, disease outbreak in the fall. And so we're um, being, we're talking about how we are ready for the possibility of all online teaching in the fall, right? Until we get to a vaccine and get some control over this disease. So do we have a plan now? No, we don't have a plan. Are we working on getting there in very short order? Absolutely. Uh, and um, so in particular, uh, for example, at one of the many meetings I had today, um, uh, at the university level, we're talking with the Delphi Center, which provides all of our distance education, and they're going to be ramping up faculty assistance to do online teaching so that in the event that we are all online still in the fall, uh, we'll be able to, uh, to do that. Um, I will say that for things that are particular to law schools, um, this is being driven really in a national conversation. So. Just to give you an example, um, uh, on this meeting I was in today with national law deans, uh, it's not finally decided, but it seems pretty likely to me that the, all of the on-campus interviewing will happen in January and not August and September, um, mostly at the request of firms waiting to see what their needs are going to be. Uh, their hope is that that will you know, relieve and you know another anxiety point in the short term and allow them to plan plan better again this is not um said yet uh, dean smith wanted to add something very quickly just to confirm the the vote that we had last week was only for this semester so whether or not we go all online in the period in the future the faculty has not voted to move online classes to only pass fail um, that would be decided later, but I would imagine that at some point we will go back to the regular grading system. We were just concerned for right now, this semester, what we were doing. So I don't want to say right. it's not a, a program that we're pushing out for the rest of the year, for example. Right. Well, that's a, that's a very good point. Thanks. And I mean, if I, and again, I'm speaking for myself, I'm not speaking for the faculty. The faculty needs to decide grading policy. It's their decision, not mine. But I would be surprised, for example, if for the summer, uh, people would vote for summer courses uh, to be pass-fail. Because we now, you know, we've had this, we've all had this trial by fire, whether teaching or learning online, where you hadn't anticipated that. And um, so we will have some familiarity with the technology as the university is ramping up its um, uh, provision of resources for faculty to be able to teach online and so people should be more comfortable with it. So again, although it's a faculty vote, not Colin Crawford's vote, I would be surprised if that was not the case. But we'll see. We never know. One thing I do want to mention um, is uh, that um, we have a small, we always have a small budget item for student emergencies. They tend to be health related, not exclusively, but they can be other things as well uh, where people are short on resources. Um, uh, faculty, uh, some faculty and staff have been generously contributing to that fund over the past uh, week. We also were informed today that every law school is going to get $25,000 from the Access Lex uh, uh, entity, the one that uh, former Dean DeSanto went to work for. And for student emergencies, uh, I uh, formed a, a three-person committee today on which I'm on, uh, Dean Sweeney and uh, Dean Hajak, and we're coming up with some instructions on how people apply. In addition, if you have financial or other immediate necessities, um, then um, you should first go and apply. There's a student fund available through the university you can apply to. And finally, I should say that um, Dean Becker doesn't know this yet because we were not able to connect yet today, and he's now out taking his daily jog. 
but um, I'm going to ask him to prepare a, um, a web page uh, for the law school uh, web page that uh, provides resources, including information about our fund. Um, let's see. Okay, so that's what I got. I've covered all of the questions uh, that I've had. Um, anyone want to raise their hand and just anything that's going on in their head? Any concerns? Uh, Kelly, how are you? How are the kids? Hey, they're okay. Um, so I just wanted to say, as far as a general comment, I really appreciate what the faculty and the deans are doing for the students right now. And I really appreciate the understanding of the students that might not be in the same situation as everyone. Canceling schools for parents um, is just, it just destroys our ability to, you can probably hear my kids in the background now. Without childcare, we can't, I can't even read without someone asking me for snacks constantly. So it's just like I never have time. And that scared me so much. And I appreciate what everyone did, uh, Dean Sweeney, Dean Crawford, Dean Smith, everyone responded to my concerns and took those concerns into consideration. And I really appreciate that. And uh, I feel like I won't have to drop out because of that decision. So I think a lot of folks are upset because it does affect them, but also employers and judges are going through this too. They also have children who are not in school. They also don't have grandparents watching their kids anymore because it's dangerous. I mean, I, I can't have that right now. I need to keep my parents safe. I need to keep everyone safe. So that is a responsible choice to make, not only for your students, but for the community. And I thank you. The kids are coming in now. We can see them. Oh, yeah, they're hungry. They want dinner. But I wanted to say thank you for on those two points before I leave. <laughs> well, Kelly, I mean, I think uh, thank you so much for that comment. I think this really illustrates that how we are all in this together, even though we have different experiences. It is just also new. I had today one of the, the people who directly reports to me on the staff. We had our weekly meeting and uh, she has kids and she very cheapishly said to me, you know, I have to be honest, I'm not as productive as usual. And I said, of course you're not as productive as usual. Your whole family rhythm has been disrupted. You have a five-year-old in, you know, coming in and out uh, every, 10 minutes. So I think, you know, uh, it's, it's useful for us, uh, to, for all of us to hear this. So thank you very much. And I hope you and the kids stay safe. Thank you. Okay. Nicole Durbin, you have your hand up. Can you hear me? Are you in Puerto Rico, Nicole? I am. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Good. So I guess a lot of us three L's are really you know, kind of upset about graduation and maybe just kind of like want an answer about like whether or not we have to wait till December or whether it's going to be in the fall or like what kind of graduation. Mm -hmm. So um, that's an excellent question, Nicole, because it was upsetting for us as well. I mean, that's a really special moment, obviously, for for uh, for the graduates, for their families and friends for faculty and staff as well. Um, and it was uh, very regrettable, but again, it's happening nationally. Um, we've talked about, I, I, I shouldn't say we, I've talked to some faculty very casually up to this point about what we might do. And so um, as a school of law, I mean, so there will be the university graduation, at least as of this moment in December, uh, whether there will be, um, and, but we've talked also about what we might do as a law school um, uh, before that, you know, maybe once we, you know, see how things look in June, we've talked about maybe we have a big law school party, maybe we try and just have our law school graduation. And so what I'd ask actually, um, um, is let me see is um so i think connor cafferty has gone offline but um if you nicole and people who feel this way if you could communicate with your sba representatives or share this with dean sweeney as the interim associate dean uh for student affairs what you would like to see happen get some ideas you know i'd be happy to canvas the 3L class, and you know, if you give, a, it'd be especially nice if you gave us the ideas 
of what you would think should happen because we're, we are thinking about this we just in the rush to you know just worry about getting the semester done that's taken most of the attention but this is an issue that people are thinking about okay and then uh, thank you for that and I also have a second question um, I know I've seen that a lot of articles and stuff are talking about if you go to an ABA accredited school they're talking about possibly waving you in for the bar like they do in Wisconsin. I know that's kind of far-fetched, um, but for people like myself who are not practicing in Kentucky, like obviously left, um, you know, what would that, if it did happen, what would that look like for those of us who are not practicing in the state where we receive our um, degree, if that could maybe be brought up in one of these meetings that you're possibly having? Well, it, this is actually, this is it's impossible for me to answer that question it's impossible for any dean to answer the question because the states are the jurisdiction makes the decision so in other words the puerto rican bar in your case will make the decision it's not some national decision made by deans and so i would just encourage you and people who are similarly placed uh to uh to be vocal with the bar where you hope to sit, uh, to be admitted, uh, that you uh, express your concerns to them and see what they're thinking. Because it's made, at the end of the day, all of the admissions decisions are made by the state bar. Okay, thank you. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Well, stay well there. The one positive, you, I, I imagine the infection rate's pretty low there right now, right? Um, it's because we're under such a strict curfew right now. I right. Really on certain days and um, right although there's also apparently there's a benefit of heat because the virus doesn't seem to do so well above 65 degrees fahrenheit so yeah that's that's what they say but they close the beaches so you know yeah they don't know yet they don't know yet yeah. well stay right. safe Thanks. um uh, with a couple of other hands elizabeth clements you're next uh thank you dean crawford um i have one practical question about the summer that i think will affect many students so for those of us who have lost jobs or had the date postponed obviously we are going to be under financial strain and those with families may be more in a financial crisis and so looking beyond the possibility of student funds you know that could help with those situations because i predict there's going to be a lot um, for students who take summer courses and i don't know because i haven't taken law school courses over the summer and i'm guessing most people haven't do you know if um, we are able to take out student loans to cover the cost of that tuition and the books required for the courses? Um, and do you know if, similar to the semester, if we can take loans for basic living expenses? Um, because I think most people aren't going to be able to take any other kind of job since businesses are closed and things like that. Right. Yeah, that's an excellent question. So. Um... My understanding is as follows, although there's a caveat, I say my understanding because actually one of the things I noted to myself earlier for this university discussion is on Monday, uh, is, is uh, wrapped in here. My understanding is, yes, um, that um, the summer semester is just like any other semester. Again, my hope is that we get enough courses that people can make some, you know, robust progress to a degree if they want to take that option, but that you can borrow. Um, the question there's uh, uh, that is, and it's a national question. I've talked to people all across the country about this. Is um, that typically people get that um, cost of assistance ranking from your financial aid? And that may have to be adjusted uh, within the relevant period. So that's the thing I'm going to clarify in my uh, university meeting uh, Monday. And um, I hope I remember to get back to you, Elizabeth, or others who have this concern. But certainly come that back to me right. next week if you're inclined at this time when I'm, I'm planning for the foreseeable future to do this uh, on Fridays. And um, the. Uh, see if, in fact, the financial aid cap uh, can be changed if need be. I mean, that may not affect you, but I just I want to clarify those details, and I don't know that. But yes, you can borrow for the summer. Does that answer your question, at least to the best of my ability right now? Yes, it does. Thank you. Great. Um, do we have any other hands? 
Okay, um, any other questions? Anybody else? Somebody tell me something nice that's happened to you this week. Anybody? The weather's nice. I made the... Go ahead. The weather's nice. The weather is nice. Yeah. The trees are blooming. I made the mistake of... Uh, since we're all watching a lot of Netflix, etc., I made the mistake of uh, watching the Gwyneth Paltrow, um, Matt Damon movie, Contagion. Not the right choice. I don't know what this is. But, um, okay, I don't see any other hands. Um, uh, there is some, um, I, I, I'm going to look over the stream on the right there. Once again, if, uh, you know, I'd encourage you all to participate next week, um, be in touch with us by email call, um, and uh, uh, same time next week. And um, thanks for tuning in.